do this. Polynomial operations test review. So we're going to be getting into the... So let's just get right into the problem. So this first one, everybody falls into this trap. This is a monomial. So it does not, we don't have to do either the synthetic or the, or the long division, right? Remember, you can rewrite this whole thing then as 6y to the fourth plus 12y to the third plus 3y squared all over 3y squared, which means I can write each piece like this. And breaking it up like this works because the bottom is a monomial and we can divide each term individually. And you'll end up with 2y squared plus 4y plus 1. Now, some of you may have had the grave misfortune of doing this problem as a long division problem, but if you follow the rules, it worked and it worked fine. Uh, for this one, this is just a problem where we need to distribute. The problem is what we're distributing, we have to follow the multiplication rule. So 3 times 5 is 15. A squared times A is A cubed. And B squared times B is B cubed. And that's the first term. The second term is 6, because 3 times 2 is 6. A squared... And then b squared times b squared is b to the fourth. Remember our rules is that, you know, is that if we're adding, exponents don't change. But if we're multiplying two numbers with the same base, then the exponent changes. And then we have to understand the difference between addition and multiplication. These are not like terms here, so that's your final answer. All right, so for this one, this is a monomial divided by a monomial. Everything's being multiplied, so we can just cancel. 18 divided by 6 is 3. Q squared divided, I mean, Q to the 9th divided by Q to the 9th just canceled. And some of you will use the subtraction rule, which is 3, mi 3 minus 10 is negative 7. And S to the 5th. And that's fine. But then we have an exponent as a negative exponent in our final answer, which is not allowed. So we would write this as 3 times s to the 5th over r to the 7th. Some of you just can visualize and say, hey, there's 3 r's on top, there's 10 r's on the bottom, so the difference, the 7, will end up on the bottom. Whichever way makes more sense to you, as long as you get this as your final answer. All right, so this one we're going to be applying multiple exponent rules. So first we're going to be raising both of these to their respective powers. So the first part of this, raised to the third power, is going to be 27. And now it's x squared cubed, so we're raising a power to a power. We're not multiplying the bases, we're raising a power to a power. So we multiply the exponents. The same thing in the second one. Then we multiply these two things together. And so we're now we're multiplying. And so 27 times 16 is 432. And then x squared times x to the 6. Now we're multiplying two numbers with the same base, so we add the exponents. And that's your final answer. And yes, I know I'm going fast, but you have the ability to pause and rewind. So now here we have one that we cannot do by breaking it apart, right? We can't break this apart like we did example number one because the denominator is a binomial. So I need a new strategy. Um, I'm going to do this one with synthetic division. The coefficient here is 1, so I can just go negative 4. I can go 2, 7, negative 4. Remember, these numbers are the coefficients up here. So I bring down the 2, and then I just go negative 4 times 2 gives me 
negative 8. And then I add and I get negative 1. And then I go negative 4 times negative 1 gives me positive 4. And I get a remainder of 0. Now, this was squared. And this was to the first. So my answer will be to the first power. So this will be 2x minus 1. All right, remember, this first term here is going to be the difference of those two terms. This is just basically asking, hey, do you know how to FOIL? First, or front, outside, inside, last. And you can use the box, you can use the clam, if it helps you, you've got all kinds of different ways you can do this. But at the end of it, let me make sure I didn't make any silly math errors since I'm going fast, we'll get 3x squared plus 14x minus 24. Um, common mistake. People are going to tell me this is equals x squared plus 1. And that is incorrect, so we're just going to throw that away. Let me throw that down the corner, maybe over here. So instead, we need to think that this is 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. And I'll get 9x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 1, or 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. All right, number 8, another one. Um, do I have any that we have to do using? No, the next two, I'll do this one via long division, just so we can see it in case we need it on the test. So I'll do this one as a long division problem. So, how do I turn x into x cubed? Well, I'm going to multiply it by x squared. So I multiply up by up what's up top by what's out front. And that will give me x cubed plus 4x squared and I subtract those. And when I, now we subtract. And so this is 8x squared minus 4x squared will give me 4x squared. And I bring down the 11x. Then I will, how do I turn x into 4x squared. Well, I'm going to multiply it by 4x. Multiply the 4x by what's up front, and I'll get 4x squared plus 16x. Now, when I subtract this time, I'll get negative 5x. So how do I turn, and then I bring down the minus 20. And so I'm just going to multiply it negative 5. remainder 0, and so my final answer is x squared plus 4x minus 5. Now you could have done that synthetically as well, but I figured I'd show you one long division and I'll do number 9 synthetically. So negative 2, now this one's a little tricky because the coefficients are 1, 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4. Careful here, there is no x squared term and we need that placeholder for the x squared term. So do this synthetically. So my remainder is 0. Now, this was x to the fourth. This was x to the first. So the first term will be x to the cubed. And if we were to write it out, we would write it out like this. But we don't write that, so we just end up with x cubed 
minus 2. Because 0 times anything is 0. All right, so this one is, you can do the, I'll show another way. I mean, I, I've shown the clam. So we'll get 2, we multiply x by everything in the second term. So this will be 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2x. That went horribly wrong. Let's try that again. There we go. Even that's a little bit off. Sorry, the smart board's acting a little weird. And then we are going to multiply the 3 by everything in the second term. So plus 6x squared plus 15x minus 6. And then we just combine like terms. 2x cubed plus 11x squared. Oh, I feel like I made a mistake somewhere. No. No, I did not. Plus 13x minus 6. And now we have, those are our like terms that were combined. And we are done with that problem. For number 12, once again, foil. Front, outside, inside, last. Don't fall into the trap. Always write in any term, write your variables in alphabetical order. And that way we don't get on this one 12yx. And that's no good because then we wouldn't see that this and this are like terms that cancel, and we'd end up with 3x squared minus 4y squared. And I'll do this one synthetically as well. So this is 2. Remember, it's the opposite of this, is what goes in there. The opposite, so it was minus 2, so we put in a positive 2. Or the other way it's defined is you solve it for zero to find out what you put in the box. Um, and then we just write in coefficients. 2, negative 3, 0, 5, because there is no x term. So then we just start going 2, 4, 1, 2, 2, Four, nine. Did I make any mistakes there? Don't think so. And so our final, now, this was cubed, this was to the first, so our answer is 2x squared plus x plus 2. And remember this last term is the reminder, so that's plus 9 over x minus 2. That was number 12. Number 13 is just combining like terms. Remember, we're not multiplying here, we're subtracting, but you want to distract, distribute the negative. So for a lot of people, when you see that problem, it helps to completely rewrite it. Distributing the negative. If one of these terms had been negative, this would have turned the distributing the negative would have turned it into a positive. And then we just combine like terms. Um, because the only these are the only like terms. All right, given, uh, find the inverses. So let's do this one first. Um, so 16 is the kind of one that you would probably look more likely to see on the SOL. So we write, rewrite it 
as y equals, and then to find the inverse, we switch the x and the y. And then we just merely solve for y. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides, and I'll get x plus 5 equals 4y. Divide both sides by 4, and I, so my final answer is that the inverse of f of x is x plus 5 over 4. Now for number 15, number 15 gets a little strange here. Um, is because technically um, we do the same thing. We do y equals x squared minus 5, and then we switch the x and the y. So we do x minus 5 equals y squared. And then we take the square root of both sides. But one of the rules is when you take the square root of both sides, one side becomes plus or minus. And the problem here is that this is no longer a function um, because there's two inputs for every output. Um, and so we would just stick with the positive outcome. But then it's not a true inverse and non-invertible. And once again, this is really going on beyond the scope of what they're asking on the SOL. Um, and so we'll accept either one of those answers. And if you really want to get more into this, we'd be happy to go into it after school with you guys. But we don't want to get too much into it at this time. So those are the problems on the test, uh, on the review, I mean. So if you have any questions, please come in with them, ready to go at your next class. Bye-bye.